There we go. I'm just seeing where I can, how far I can move without getting on the screen. There we go. Excellent. Perfect. Hey there, folks. Uh, hope you all enjoyed lunch. And to start off uh, the afternoon presentations, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Sean Pakistani. Perfect. Got it. Yeah, got it. Oh, got okay. it. Bang on. Well done. I'll be practicing all lunch. Uh, <laughs> from uh, wonderful monitoring systems. <laughs> actually surveyed about three or four boats with this uh, system on board and the owners have just been really really happy. I think it's a pretty uh, kind of neat little uh, simple system that's why I uh, asked uh, Sean if he was able to give a little presentation and with that I'll pass it over to you. Thank you very much I appreciate that. Welcome back for lunch everybody and uh, let me just start off by saying a, a big thank you for the IMS for, for having us today. It's, uh, it's obviously a pleasure to always present to anybody, especially a group like this who uh, gets their hands real dirty uh, in boats and understands the ups and downs that boats can bring to our lives. Uh, and a special thanks as Lachlan, uh, to Lachlan. As, as Lachlan mentioned, we met uh, after he was actually doing a survey uh, at, uh, on a boat that is actually at a marina where we're, we're located. We have a floating office at the Oak Bay Marina in Victoria. And uh, Lachlan knocked on the door one day, <clears throat> opened it up, said, you guys, these guys that do the system on this boat? Is, yeah, that's us. And we started talking, invited us here, we, uh, and we couldn't pass up the opportunity. So uh, thank you again, Lachlan, for having us. Uh, my name is Sean Battistoni, and I am with a company called Barnacle Systems. We have created a piece of hardware called Barnacle. Uh, what Barnacle, Barnacle is a remote monitoring system, security and monitoring system for boats. Um, you're looking at that logo up there, and that's, that's how we like to spell Barnacle. And I'll tell you a little story about that. Uh, at a recent uh, gathering of boats, uh, actually it's a Boating BC conference over in uh, Vancouver, we were talking to a very influential boat builder and somebody who we've been wanting to talk to uh, for a long time. And we had the opportunity to have lunch with him, and he said, guys, I love your logo. Tell me about the, the spelling of Barnacle. And without, there was my founder, there was the, our founder, and I'm part of the founding team, and our director of engineering just pipes up without even thinking. Was bad, just first thing he said was, you know what? When we began this company, we just couldn't afford to buy a vowel. And, <laughs> and you know what? From then on, we just, that's the story. So uh, that was back in 2017. But anyways, so the, that, this is the barnacle. So everybody... Let me introduce you to the barnacle. And actually, I'm going to pass this around. I'm going to hand it to the table. Have a look at it because this is what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to structure our um, presentation sort of in a, call it a 2020 or a 2030, 10 kind of thing. I'm going to go through this uh, presentation deck in about 20 minutes. And then we're actually going to be able to, we're going to physically interact with the app that's associated with the, with the product because that's, that's really what's going to tell the story about how this, how this works. Um, it's very simple for anybody who has a smartphone with them or a laptop. Um, we'll, 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 I'm going to take you through the demo app. I'm going to have the same thing. We're going to drive the same app. We're going to have a look at um, how it works. So um, there's no downloading anything. We'll just, in your browser, we'll, we'll, we'll type in the app. But first off, I'm just going to hand this around uh, and have a look at it. This, uh, I know I'm out of view for the folks uh, viewing here. Just a quick inputs at the bottom here. Our camera port is at the top. Um, other than that, that's... That's, that's the whole unit. So have a look, pass her around, and we'll get going here. So Barnacle, where'd we come from? Barnacle Systems Inc. is our, uh, is our company name. We were incorporated in uh, July of 2017. I became associated with, uh, with Barnacle Systems uh, in August of 2017. That was been there about, since about day 31 of the company, I believe it is. Uh, not fully, I was uh, in an advisory role at that point. Um, we'll get back into my background in a little bit when we in introduce the team, but we're headquartered in Victoria, BC, Canada. Uh, some of our, we have some friends from, some international friends, so uh, Victoria actually, very fitting. Um, I left Victoria this morning and got to take two boats to get here. Wonderful, on a beautiful day like this, you can't, you can't complain. So we're headquarters in Victoria, BC. We we're actually manufactured in Vancouver, BC, so actually our manufacturing plant, I drove by it, uh, or actually I, I went by it on the SkyTrain when uh, when uh, on, on route here. So we're very, we're very proud about that. Uh, some, of the, some of the things that we've got up to in the last uh, three years, uh, we were the first, uh, does anybody, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas happens every January. Um, we've, this year was our second year presenting at it. 
uh, the first year we were the first marine electronics product ever um, to ever uh, display, exhibit at, at Consumer Electronics Show. We were unaware of that until uh, when we got there and very flattered by it. Uh, this year, um, we like to say they followed us there, but they certainly, whether they did or not, but Brunswick um, was there this year, as I think most of you know the company Brunswick. Um, they had a bit of a different display than us. They had an entire 46 foot boat on a wall displaying all their sport, smart boat technologies. Our booth was about, I think I could have touched it doing this. So a little bit of a different display, but we're, we were proud to be alongside a company like Brunswick at that Consumer Electronics Show. We were also Pacific Yachting's uh, 2019 Best in Show at the Vancouver International Boat Show for Most Innovative. Uh, we, are the, uh, we won the Small Business BC Awards Best Concept. Um, when we began the company in 2018, we're, um, we, have a, we have a startup accelerator, tech accelerator in our, in our town called Viatech. We were the startup of the year. Um, and then this one, um, for us Canadians in the room, uh, maybe the most proud that we are, that we are a fully made in Canada product, manufactured here, and also assembled and uh, secondary and tertiary testing done in Victoria. So um, everything is done uh, within our local economy. Our mission is simple, it's to reinvent how boaters check on their boats. A little bit of our, about our founder because there's a great story behind this. Every set of kind of neat company starts with a neat story and um, this one, this, the, you'll, you'll like this one and feel free to laugh at the end because you should um, in the irony of the whole thing. Uh, Brandon Wright is our founder. He is from Comox, BC, uh, graduated from the University of Victoria with an electrical engineering degree. <laughs> Um, right out of university, uh, he got himself into an extremely important job uh, with a company called FLIR. And I think we're all, we all know FLIR because FLIR owns Raymarine. Um, FLIR cameras, we've seen them on, on, on boats. Uh, Brandon wasn't associated with the Marine Division at that point. He was into the integrated systems uh, for military purposes. So his job was to basically fly around the world, mostly in the Middle East, to protect um, well, he, well, in this, actually, in this particular picture, he is um, presenting to the retired Secretary of Defense of the United States um, about their, uh, US, the, they, they remotely monitor the U.S.-Mexico border. He's telling them how he's doing it. And actually, in this picture, shortly after this picture was taken, he said, sorry, son, where's your father? And Brandon, so, uh, back in my hometown of Victoria, he goes, I'm, how old are you, son? I said, well, 20 five sir he goes hmm and just gave him a hmm he's very impressed by what what he had heard he expected to be hearing from his father as opposed to him so he was um he's been in, he some of the things that he did protected uh borders of countries did a lot of work in the middle east with middle uh military bases and and, and palaces um he came home after one of his uh you know being deployed in the middle east uh found out he was having a child his wife was pregnant. While he was home, one of the bases that they were protecting was blown up. He decided, whoo, I'm done. I'm going to stop. I'm having a child. I'm now resigning from FLIR. I'm going to find something closer to home. Found himself at a company called Force Technology Services, FT FTS, is in Victoria, um, and found himself uh, developing two remote monitoring systems uh, for very different purposes than boats. The one on the left, the smaller one that has, you can see the FTS logo on it, uh, was a flood monitoring system for, um, and the USGS actually picked it up to monitor floods on, at bridges in, in the U.S. So, so he got a sole, he had a sole source with the USGS to quite literally ensure that if, if there was flooding on a bridge, a message was um, given to the headquarters and they could uh, prepare as necessary. The one on the right, the taller sort of antenna looking thing, was an actual remotely deployed um, Fire, uh, uh, force firefighting monitoring system. So these would get remotely deployed in areas and they would scan areas and pick up sensing of smoke or flame, send that notification back to the headquarters and um, notify those who need to be notified in order to go mitigate that fire. All while he's doing that, he's got a boat on a mooring ball just off his parents' house in Mill Bay. Gets a call one night in January of 2017, by his dad, 3 a.m. in the morning, says, son, I said, hey, dad, everything okay? Uh, yeah, everything's okay. But the boat's up on the beach. Major January storm, as we always experience. Boat ends up 
breaks some orange, ends up on the beach. Thank goodness it went to the beach as opposed to the other way. It means it would have never gone back. So Brandon's a, Brandon's a, Brandon specializes in remote monitoring. His boat obviously didn't tell him that it was breaking orange. He did some research, realized at the time there is nothing uh, that satisfied what he was what he was after, knowing that um, he was an expert in remote monitoring and his boat broke orange in a uh, in a storm and ended up on a beach. Shame on him, by the way, for not checking his lines. He thought, "I'm out. That's it. I quit. I'm going to develop it. Everything that he's taken from the past. Why can't I?" Just make this happen. So, to go to line of credit on his home to start the business. Our crew, our, our core crew, the short guy on the left, that's me. I uh, sort of grew up in the boating world at the Oak Bay Marine Group, spent six years in, um, in, in marina operations. So, I, was, I left as a general manager of, uh, of marinas for the Oak Bay Marine Group uh, and with some sales background with Molson Coors Canada and um, and Shaw Cable Systems. Brandon came from FLIR, uh, and as we've heard, and then Darren, our director of engineering, the couldn't afford vowels guy, um, came from a company called Carmana Technologies. Carmana is actually in Victoria, um, and if we've ever sort of uh, taken our boat past a buoy um, and seen any of the lights, solar lights, he's created them. So he was, uh, he was lead uh, head of technology, or manager of hardware um, for Carmana and developed uh, remote um, systems for, for lighting of buoys. That's the core. We've got, um, we've got two other software engineers, two co-ops, marketing uh, contractor, uh, and uh, sales agents uh, deployed uh, in and around North America. So the hardware. You're, everybody's getting a chance to see the hardware. That's the barnacle itself. Fits in the palm of your hand. Um, that's, one of our, uh, that's one of our customers right there at uh, Kingfisher. This is the uh, install associated with it. Really, in the end, those 14 inputs on the bottom are just sensing wires that, that sense uh, a, a change in voltage or, uh, and will report back to you uh, what that change is. So you can see all we're, all we're doing is tapping into current wiring systems in place right now. Um, and that's delivered back to that communicated to the cloud, then dropped into your app. Um, I will say this just before we get by because everybody's going to ask this question and I'm going to for forget to tell you, but I'm going to tell you now. The way the delivery system is, is made in those um, is through cellular. And we have a global cellular uh, plan that allows uh, that unit itself to work anywhere in the world and also without changing on a SIM card. So we've got a global, and we are the, we are, we are the cell providers. So that global SIM card has now seen, um, has flashed up in now 20 countries and allows you to sort of cross borders without any interruption. So if, you know, for proximity in terms of if you head off to Vancouver, you can get into the States really, really quick. You're not gonna see um, any interruption to service in, in that, unless there's no cell service, but we'll get into that too. I think we've, we've, we've solved that as well. So that's the hardware. The app itself. The app exists on web and, and, and mobile applications. So again, like I said, we're going to go through the app and we're going to play with it and have a look at it and, and, and understand the capabilities that the Barnacle offers. But what you see on your desktop, you're going to see exactly the same on your Android app or your Apple app. We built it on a system called Ionic. It's a platform that basically once uh, it's deployed on uh, one, it gets deployed on all and looks exactly the same on all. Sometimes you look at an Android app and an Apple app and they look very different. Um, we've decided, we made the de uh, conscious decision to make sure that it looks exactly the same on everyone. And it's a lot easier and more efficient, to be honest with you. So, the best way we like to see, show you how uh, this works is just tell you, there's three stories that we like to tell. And these are all real life use cases, all from our customer base. It's get, it gives you a sense of um, just the capabilities of this thing. So we, this one's called the dead battery. So, Bone owner arrives back, forgets to turn, we've all done it, forgets to turn the battery switch off in his boat. So his house batteries are starting to, uh, uh, have been left on. So ben, boater went on a round trip, uh, August 19th, returns back, house battery accessories are left on. Boater receives an alert. So alerts are given in two ways, just a push notification on your phone, just like you would get on, uh, as, a, as a notification that you got a text. Um, and you can ask you to send you an email at the same time as well. 
Photo received an alert, first alert at 10.17 p.m. on August 21st. And you can see, I'm sorry I'm, for those that are watching, I'm going to point at something here. I'm going to leave that screen. So this is a list of the alerts that the individual had received. This is the graph he can now look at as well, associated with the input. So what he's watched is here, his battery is up at 12, uh, 12 volts. Dip down, now he's plugged back in uh, up to 13 and a half. And you can see when he's, he's now unplugged his short power and, has, and this is what's happening to his battery. You can see his battery drain down to, I think it's 11.8 uh, or so. So nearly at you know, critical matter for his batteries that they're gonna be dead. Boater uh, returns on August 22nd. August 22nd, plugs the short power and turns batteries off. Batteries come up. Batter that boater was about to leave the New Zealand the next day. On, also on, on, on August 24th, a car took out a, we know this because this is a boat at our marina. A car took out a power, uh, a power pole just down the street, knocked out the entire power for all of, um, all of the marina. So his batteries would have been dead. He would have had no shore power. Hey, we live in Victoria, it rains. Look out. Um, I mean, that battery could have sunk, or that boat could have sunk. Or he could have lost his batteries um, as his, uh, and, and, and you know, batteries aren't cheap. <laughs> so it saved him a couple, a couple 500 bucks for uh, a, a battery bank. My boat almost sunk. And again, these are all, these are all use cases of what, of, of what we've heard from our boaters. Uh, this boat owner lives in Alberta. His boat is in, um, in a marina in, on Vancouver Island. What you're seeing there is a, is a graph of his bilge activity. You can see all those, all those, high, all those high spikes are his bilge turning on. And then you see a high spike with a, a little bit fatter sort of turquoise. That's actually, that's, that's showing that, that going on and staying on for, it's tough to tell, I think it was like four or five minutes. So he's getting these off and on, off and on, off and on. Calls up the marina, says, Marina, something's going on at my, on my boat. Can you go check? Marina goes down and checks, and his tarp has broken and created a funnel that is basically funneling water into the base of his mast, and the base of his mast is not sealed. He has literally has a waterfall coming into his boat. It's a 48 foot Beneteau. At the same time, the short power kicks out because again, it's, 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 it's the fault. No short power, now this bilge is running, battery's draining, water's coming in his boat. That almost killed his batteries. That boat would have been on the, on the bottom of the ocean um, in no time. Third and final one, this is, always the, this, is always, this is a lot of people's favorite one, the unexpected guest. This is Brandon, again, Brandon's boat. Brandon gets a notification on his smartwatch. It says, if you can't read it there, it says, hatch changed to open, also motion detected. So Brandon confirms in his graphs that the hatch has opened, and you see that. The closed is when it's on the top, it drops down to open. He also looks at his heel angle. There's an accelerometer in that, in that unit. So he's, as somebody's gotten onto his boat, his boat has, has listed a little bit. Well, listed quite a bit, almost nine degrees. So he's now confirmed that, whoop, yep, somebody is on my boat. Next thing we know, a photo gets generated on the alert. Turns out it's just his dad who had forgotten to a, this is actually his dad trying to, because there's also an alarm on the boat. This is actually his dad trying to turn the alarm off because he's forgotten to turn the alarm off. So, phew, it's only my dad, but hey dad, let me know next time you had me, I'm shopping with my, my, my family. You scared the heck out of me. There's an, and again, these are all real use cases that we like to, uh, that we like to show. So what we do, we, the unit itself has really, uh, it has a whole bunch of capabilities, but two major ones to uh, mitigate theft and mitigate problems. And within that unit, um, theft, for instance, that, that's, a, that's a real look at the app and you'll get a chance to look at this app. It's GPS with geofencing. So that's actually a, a look at Brandon's boat right there. He's on that mooring ball. Um, that, green, that green fence is the geofence. If the boat slides outside that geofence, you get an alert. Somebody were to get on, on that boat and take it outside that geofence, you get an alert. There's a camera associated with it. It takes stills. It doesn't take video at this point because it is on cellular, so we want to keep that bandwidth um, at a reasonable rate and a cellular plan that's at a reasonable um, monthly charge. 
You can add pressure mats to it. You can add door and window sensors to it. You can add audible alarms to it. Problems it, like, it, it can mitigate is you know, shore power monitoring, bilge activity, high water alarms, battery voltages, uh, um, fire and carbon monoxide can be hooked up to this thing. There's a lot of use cases for this as to, as to um, keep, keep an eye on the boat. We often get asked this, insurance. And we were, Lachlan and I were just talking about this. Are there insurance incentives to having a barnacle on your boat? The answer is yes. Um, how many people are from Eastern Canada? Are any Eastern folks here? Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so we name both of these because there's sort of a Western partner and an Eastern partner. Uh, MD Marine Insurance has come on board and will offer um, discounts for if boat owners have a barnacle on your boat. I know how closely you, you do work with the insurance companies um, or know them. So M&D Insurance back east will, Dolphin Insurance out west will. So um, it's all based on their uh, underwriters and who will partner with it. So clarify with them first before just saying, hey, they're going to give you 10%. Just make sure you clarify with them first because it is, it is underwriter based. But we have... Um, both are very happy and they were actually both at the Vancouver Boat Show promoting the fact that Barnacle will give up to 10% of a discount on insurance. Um, I will speak a little further to this because the insurance world is changing as we've all seen. The insurance world is changing rapidly in terms of, um, well, many different factors. But we've heard, um, we had a great uh, presentation put on by Boating BC about the insurance world. There's a lot of one strike and you're out these days. It used, to, it used to be three strikes and you're out. There's like a one strike and you're out one claim you're uninsurable there's also now age limits some insurers have just said look if your boat's 30 years or older i'm not touching it and then you got the marinas saying well you can't be in our marina if you're not insured so boaters are going like geez my boat's 30 years old it's an unbelievable shape but because it's an age that people are like i 30 year old boat's not that old i mean it's it's a, that's a, that's still a beautiful, I, I look outside my, op, my office, there's 30 year old plus boats all over the place and they look like they're two years old. Some people keep them in, in such great shape. So I will say the insurance world is changing and anybody from the States, anyone who's from the States there, uh, you'll see your, um, there's plenty the States likes to give because of the highly competitive market will, they like to give a lot more uh, discounts than our Canadian friends do. So you will see, um, basically the box on that insurance. Do you have a remote monitoring system on your boat? You check that, you almost all automatically qualify for some rate of insurance. I guess I'll leave that in. The, the insurance world is ever changing. I, I guess I wanted to make sure that it was included because there is, there is a benefit to having this and getting discounts um, with, I'll probably leave it at that because I'm like, like as, yes, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, people are saying anywhere up to 10%. So depending on what that, really how, how we're almost equating it is our, our, cellular, our cellular fee is $25 a month. It almost covers that in terms of, uh, in terms of cost. So, you know, 300 bucks for a year, 3,000 bucks a year on insurance. That's a little steep, but we can get there pretty quick on some boats. So... We've had a, you know, we started in 2017. We've had a very exciting year. Um, we are very, very proud um, to be now um, assisting in the remote monitoring of, of, of three very, you know, high level entities in Canada. Actually, I have to leave right after this to go present to the Navy at 315, just across the water. We are now um, trusted by the Navy, Transport Canada, and the Coast Guard for their remote monitoring needs. Uh, so, uh, Transport Canada, we've got, a, we've got a, a patrol fleet in Victoria that patrols the Victoria Inner Harbor uh, that has deployed them on all their boats. Uh, the Navy has them on, uh, is deploying 13 on, on their ribs as our first uh, rollout with them. And uh, the Coast Guard is um, deploying them on uh, current vessels and also vessels of concern um, that are a big deal in our, in our, on our West Coast and East Coast. Those boats that are uh, derelict. Um, and we're putting, they're actually putting remote systems on there that we've built custom for the Coast Guard for them to just watch while they're dealing with the rest. Um, it's been a, it's been a fun project and, uh, one that we're super proud to be a part of. So, and that's just, that, that has just started and we're going to continue that. Uh, we're really starting to ramp up with them now. Um, also for those recreational, uh, influencers, 
for those fishermen on the West Coast, um, Brendan Morrison and his team at the Real West Coast, uh, that boat, that Kingfisher you saw earlier, uh, was, a, uh, was Brendan, Brendan Morrison's boat. Um, we are a partner of Brendan's. Um, any sailors in here, any listen to podcasts, 59 North podcast, if you don't listen to it, it is, the, it is actually the most followed podcast, sailing podcast in the world. Um, they, have, uh, they have two boats, and it, uh, Ice Bear and Isbjorn, and they basically travel the world. And it's been nice to see um, they've had our unit in, I think it's like 16 countries now. Um, and sailing vessel Delos is another very popular sailing influencer, as they call it, in the social media world. They now have had ours. Um, we're on their boat, and they've had them in 15 or so countries, including a transatlantic um, crossing. Uh, so it's been, it's been fun to watch them uh, and see our unit. Actually, we had a, we had a testimonial from um, the, the, the captain of SV Delos. So that he had to, when he got into the Bahamas, had to replace his uh, SIM card on his, in, his, in his smartphone eight times as he crossed border to border to border to border. And the, the barnacle caused him no issue at all. Just kept on connecting as he, as he went through. So what's next? We've got this great product, Barnacle, that uh, does um, a lot of great things. Um, we've had well over a year of uh, retail ready um, uh, sort of testimonials and, and, and listening to customers. We're, we're, we're on about 250 boats at this point. We love to listen to our customers and they, you know, what do you need? What do you want? We've got some flexibility. We are, we, we don't have investment. We are fully funded by cash flow and, 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 and bootstrapped. So we've got lots of flexibility in what we can do. Um, and what we've heard loud and clear from our customer base is, uh, are, are these three things or four things. So we've created our product called the Barnacle Mate that will be launching retail ready in the late spring. Barnacle Mate plugs into that top camera port that you saw there and will allow for wireless sensors. And what we've actually done is partnered with Samsung. And Samsung, uh, there are certain wireless sensors we will not do, uh, right now, anyways. Um, one is battery, one is bilge. It's way too easy to just do, to wire them. And it's so just cut and dry when you have things wired. We've seen some of our competition do wireless uh, battery and, and, and bilge sensors, and it has impacted them greatly because they're not working properly and there's interference. So we partnered with Samsung to uh, develop our, our mate acts as a hub to their Zigbee sensors. And you can go to Best Buy and buy these things off the shelf. They're called Samsung Smart Things. You can go and buy them off the shelf for 29 bucks each. And they connect up to our barnacle mate that will show you that change in your app. Um, things like door sensors, um, water leak detection, motion sensors. Uh, and all these are multi-use too. So you're going to find the door sensor is actually also a temperature gauge and also an accelerometer. So it'll, it'll, it'll give you your heel pitch and impact as well. So lots of fun stuff there. Um, that's coming out, like I said, in the spring. Satellite communications. People say, well, I like to go up the inside passion, passage or I like to fish tuna offshore. Great. We've now included the ability to add a satellite antenna. Plugs into the barnacle mate. They are iridium based. Uh, rock block. I don't know if ever, anybody's ever heard of a rock block sensor or uh, rock block or an iridium based antenna out of a company called Beam. Beam builds um, Beam builds uh, the iridium goes for iridium. They're the OEM partner for them. So uh, great stuff coming from satellite. Multi camera support. So you'll be able to add a second camera to show another angle. And also uh, NMEA 2000 data that you'll be able to plug into the bus and be able to see that in your app. And again, that app that we'll have a look at. So that is, um, we have pre, we, the pre-orders have started on that. We launched that at the Consumer Electronics Show this year, launched it at the Canadian market at the Vancouver Boat Show. Uh, pre-orders have been going well and it'll be delivered to the, to the market in um, late spring. Everybody wants to know how much this thing is. Uh, Barnacle hardware itself, though, so that unit itself, $1,245. The accessories range from about 15 bucks for a door sensor to about 200 bucks for a um, key fob and, and siren. Uh, again, these are Canadian dollars. I, I know we've got some American friends here. Um, $8.99 US, that's what you, you see there. Uh, the Barnacle subscription is, um, again, is required, paid to us. We do not do anything on Wi-Fi because it's not reliable enough. And you certainly don't have Wi-Fi while you're on a mooring ball. Uh, 
Uh, Barnacle subscription is $300 a, a year, or you can decide to go month to month and go $29 a month and turn it on and off as you, as you please. And obviously, we, you know, our, our distributors and dealers are very important folks to, our, folks to us, so we do have a dealer network and, and distribution uh, channels that um, if you knew of somebody that might want to carry this, we certainly have a plan in place to do that. I have a whole bunch as I'm blowing through this. I do have a bunch of brochures, my cards. I will be here through the, um, through the coffee to answer any questions and, and that, that, that get missed, so I'm happy to do that. That's how to get a hold of me. That's our website, barnacle.io. That's me right there, sean at brnkl.io. And my cards are here. I've actually left a stack of brochures and cards over there as well. So just before we get into the app and a little more uh, in depth here, any questions that you, I went through that real quick. Yes, go ahead. It's not there yet, but we do have there. Uh, there's a possibility, and there's been things that we've been batting around the office to, as to how to how to monitor that electrolysis in the water. Um, to you know, uh, there's 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 probably a way that we can do it, and and we've been batting it around. Is that we is, is that sort of what you're looking? You're you're wondering what you know electro if I, we were to stick a something in the water and see that measure that electro something that we've actually talked about and batted around in the um, all those, those, those four sort of new expanded features that we just talked about that the maid are going to uh, bring in, um, those were priority, but that's on, that has been on the list and something that I'm going to take back again and now that we've heard it again. We basically, we have that list, we look at the requests that come in, um, and when the demand gets high enough, we, we put it on the list to do. So it's, thank you for that again, because that is something we can have a look into. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, so with the Barnacle Mate, it will roll out uh, in sequence. So we're going to start with a wireless. So the Barnacle Mate will allow for that. The, um, it potentially, so what, the connection between the Barnacle Mate and the NEMA bus itself will be done just through an ActiSense. Um, NEMA 2000 to uh, serial to NEMA 2000. Um, so it'll just connect up to that, uh, that common bus that you have all the rest of your electronics um, connected to. But that will be, just, just to answer, sorry, just to answer the, just to finish the first point about that. The NEMA 2000 rollout will likely be, um, the wireless sensors and camera will come first, satellite next, and then the NEMA 2000 stuff. Um, so within sort of, we want to launch it to the market in late spring, hopefully by the end of sort of summer, October, and then even 2000 stuff comes back. When we, we tend, in the boating world, we, do, we, we go sort of like quiet. Like nobody's really buying a barnacle in the summer because they're on their boat. And then it's when they put the boat back um, is when we see our activity climb again. I shouldn't say nobody's buying a barnacle, but people do. But our activity and our, because people are just use, using their boat and enjoying their boat. When they come back, that's when they, so we want to we want to co correspond the NEMA 2000 stuff back to that sort of um, uh, that sort of date that September October for sure. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. So great question. So we have certified installers. Um, a lot of our dealer network is um, is a retailer and installer type, um, but we actually built the we built that as you see it's it, again they're just sensing wires. You do not need to have ABYC certification to do it. We built it to be actually self-install. Uh, we have a very robust instruction manual that's on our website that is public. You have a look at it. Um, it's at our Barnacle Help Center. Literally, we made this as step-by-step -step easy as, as possible. Um, if you have any little knowledge of uh, some knowledge, like I'm a boater. I hate dealing with electronics. The test was, our founder was like, you go install this thing. And I had no problem installing it. Um, again, I have a little bit of knowledge, but I'm always the one that calls my guy to do it. But I, if I can do it, most can, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. So as well as monitoring that battery, it's getting a trickle charge from one battery. So it does require 12 volts. It does have a battery in it as backup. 
but that that 12 volt or, yes yes exactly so it'll take 20, 12 or 24 volts it'll use that as a trickle charge if your batteries if your batteries cop out it'll have another about day to 24 to 36 hours it'll it'll it built in battery exactly um the power draw on these things are like next to nothing as brandon is sort of a, a very very low voltage specialist um when it reports takes about 60 milliamps for um when it on average to report and by report i mean generate a generate a report every it reports every 15 minutes and when it's sitting in old, low power mode not doing anything it's 20 microamps so it's like it's certainly when people say hey i think this thing's draining my battery it's like it's not. I can promise you that. Something else is. And actually, we had a really, that boat, actually, Lachlan, that you were, we had a gentleman say, yeah, Jesus thinks, the owner say, Jesus thinks this thing's drawing my battery. It's like, it's, no, there's no way it is. And what he found is that he had a secondary bilge pump on there that he ended up connecting it to that kept on tripping. It, the float switch was just, was getting stuck. And it was, it, so these things have taught him about his boat. So he actually came to the Vancouver Boat Show and thanked us for teaching him about his boat. So. Anything else? Do you want to pop up? Yeah, yeah, you bet. So if you have a smartphone and would like to see this closer, I'm going to have it here, but if you want to, if it's hard to see some of the numbers, um, please bring out your smartphone and open up your web browser to your smartphone and type in app.brnkl dot i o a p p dot b r n k l dot i o once you get to our sign in page so this is our sign in page we don't have to sign in you don't have to what we're going to do do you want do you want to enlarge this Michael? just hit that uh that square on the top there i'm oh, sorry just enlarge it at the top there on that just full screen it there you go okay so if you're following along on your phone, just hit the demo, hit the demo button on the, on your app there. And we'll, we'll go this to, through this together. Yeah, you bet. Go ahead and hit the demo app. It's going to log me into our demo boat. There we are. This is a, this is a look at real live data out of a boat right now. This boat happens to be our office in at the Oak Bay Marina. That, as you see, we've got a GPS with geofence surrounding our boat and down here at the bottom in in white and what you will experience on your phone you won't see all of this right away but on the there's a top gray bar there's the two upside down sort of, or sort of arrowheads here tap on that arrowhead and it'll expand all the data um, to show you everything that i'm looking at too on this desktop everybody see that did you get that so on this boat, it's monitoring two battery banks, a house battery and a starter battery. You can monitor up to four. So this one in particular, on the left side, you see 12.65 volts. And to answer the question about, about battery, this, likely, this is getting powered off the house battery or that receiving that trickle charge. So 12.65 is the house battery. Starter battery is at 12.64. If you wanted to add two more battery banks, whether it's a genset battery or bow thruster battery or whatever other batteries you got hooked up to, you could do that. Uh, in this case, we don't, so we remove them off the grid so it doesn't clutter our grid. Uh, there, it's monitoring, and, and I should say, and if you're not using all your batteries, you can actually convert them to other um, monitoring systems. You can convert them to extra bilge pumps, convert them to ignition monitoring. So if you, you know, monitoring, monitoring your engine runtime. In this case, we're not. We just, we're, we're utilizing the, the dedicated bilge um, input, so it's telling me it's not pumping. Uh, there, we've got a key fob and siren connected to this. So this key fob is, is disarmed. So that means like when we entered the boat, it, we disarmed it. So uh, the alarm did not go off. Um, the pressure mat on, um, when you open up our office, there's a pressure mat at the, um, inside the door. You step on that, you get an alert. Uh, the door, there's a door sensor here. Again, it's just a simple magnetic contact. That's, the door is closed right now. Um, heel humidity 
impact and pitch and temperature are all built into the unit. So there's no extra accessories that are required to do that. There's an accelerometer that deals with a hit, heel and pitch. And there's an accelerometer and then, and then measures impact as well. So impact monitoring can be, well, if something bumps into your boat, if your boat lurches off the dock um, in a storm, or if your boat is banging off the dock, uh, we'll, we'll tell folks if they need to go down there and uh, retie uh, their vessel. And then we've got a shore power um, connection on this. And it says disconnector right now, which is troubling because that is our office. So I'm, I'm, there has been, the breaker may have blown. Some of these that you're looking on here do require extra accessories. So the extra accessories that you see here, that key fob, pressure mat, and door, and shore power. Everything else comes standard with our unit, inclusive of um, photos. Uh, I should say camera. If you want to have a look at, let's just pop down to um, just the, the graphs at the bottom there. So whatever you monitor down in that white area, you'll get a graph for it. Again, these spikes, these spikes look a little bit dramatic, but it's actually only going from, I think, 12.3, tough to see there, 12.63 actually. So they're a lot more dramatic uh, than they need to be. And, and that's actually the thing because all that's doing is that those numbers are taking a sort of an aggregate from a bunch of time. And exactly, this is actually a positive thing. So um, anything, again, anything, if you want to just, you know, those little gray dots in the bottom there, if you want to just, um, whether you go one by one or, like I said, everything, anything that you see here at the bottom um, is, is, gets graphed. If you don't monitor something, you're not going to get an extra graph that means nothing. Um, photos, you want to hit that photo button at the bottom. The photo again, the camera comes standard. Photos will get generated on schedule, on an alert, or you can take a photo of, um, we don't actually, this is, this is again, this brand is, well, we link things up for privacy sake. We're not going to, it's not interesting. Our office is not interesting. So um, you would just see a door. So again, this is linked up to Brandon's boat. And um, it's quite funny. You see a pop bottle in this. Um, this is his dad's sort of archaic way of monitoring how rough it's been. Um, if the pop bottle falls over, well, it's been rough. He forgets that there's a heel and pitch accelerometer in the unit and this is the this is the irony again in these pictures he thinks it's funny and it's actually very funny when you think about it um it's try it it's his, it's his tried and true method so these are the photos yeah sorry you can you can force it to take a photo you know a photo on alert or you can you know get a photo on um schedule the schedules are done in the in the um in the settings and then there's a there's an alerts page that will give you a list of alerts that um, a lot of these are sort of generated to show some of the things you can see. Um, so you'll get a list of alerts. You can obviously clear these. Um, and then your settings, everything is, everything is fully customizable to the boat um, in the settings. Um, you can name things, whatever you want to name them, um, because you can go more specific on a bilge pump. It could be aft bilge or stern bilge or port side bilge, um, house battery, or like I said, um, starboard battery, that type of thing. So um, yeah, that's, that's the barnacle. Anybody, any questions about, about the app that you're seeing here? Again, you're looking at it through, we do have a, an application that you would download through, through the App Store or Google Play, or you can just access it through, uh, through the web. Um, look, and again, it looks exactly the same on your desktop as it does on your phone. And one point I will make too is actually for those of you, um, I mean, oh, I just spilled my water. Um, for those of you who know of yacht management companies, um, somebody who looks after um, several boats, uh, you, can, you can monitor multiple boats on one account. There's no extra charge for that. Um, you can share uh, your boat serial number on that barnacle. There's a specific serial number to each barnacle. Um, you can share that serial number and a password that you create that serial number. And, you can, have, you can have your wife monitor, you can have your kids monitor, you can have your, your neighbor monitor it. Um, so when you do go away, somebody is getting those alerts and, and can respond to them, or the marina, if you will. Um, so that's, a, that's people, people like that, that you can 
Um, I myself, have, I think I'm on our 20 boats and they're mostly customer boats that they like to just have that peace of mind that, you know, we're helping them with the, with the app. It's most, a lot of our early adopters. Yeah, but multiple boats and, and shareable across wherever you'd like. Uh, and that, that's a great, I mean, it's, it's ready to go in the UK. Do we have a dealer in the UK? No, we just signed a dealer. We just signed a, a sales agent's um, um, contract. He's working out of Switzerland, but going to, um, but will uh, sell into the UK. Um, he has no exclusivity. So if there's more people in the UK, we are happy to speak with them. Um, because yeah, like I said, this, this platform is built to work anywhere in the world um, and, and has. We've got a number in Amsterdam, we've got a few in Spain, we've got um, a couple, one in Greece. Um, we've had a boat in Africa. Uh, it's been quite neat to see, for sure. Yeah. No, it won't, it won't communicate without cell range. Uh, what it will do, and say, you, say you're out of cell range, it'll cache data. Um, usually if you're out of cell range, it is your on your boat, so it'll cache data and, and, and dump the data back in, once back in cell range. Um, but there are spots like Vancouver Island specifically, we've got a number of fishing guides that love to monitor their, uh, their boat from a security standpoint. There's certain, like, there's certain quiet spots uh, that cell, cellular just doesn't exist. And, um, but we've also seen, contrary to that, the desolation sound is you know, synonymous for having very poor cell service. Um, our unit uses, or it requires far less cell signal to utilize than a cell phone would. So we've seen cell phones cut out in desolation sound, but the unit continue to report 100% of the time. It just needs a whiff of cell service in order to work. I'm not guaranteeing it will, because there are some spots that are totally, totally dead up in desolation. But I guess the point being is that it doesn't require as much as a cell phone requires in order to make a, make a call. It, it will still communicate um, uh, quite well. Um, Bamfield was another one that surprised us. Bamfield is way on the west coast of Vancouver Island, right in the very remote area, and, and it, it picked up a cell service from somewhere. I tuna fished off Tofino. I was 40 kilometers offshore before it stopped reporting, um, and we were another 25 after that, but it reported quite, for quite a while. 